Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, our goal is to get to Chebyshev's theorem, but we need to start by talking about how data is distributed in sets. In other words, how spread out it is, how frequently different data items occur. One way of analyzing the distribution of sets is their symmetry. Here are some examples of symmetric distributions. The uniform distribution, all of the data values occur the same amount of times. In a binomial distribution, you see it has this characteristic of the middle data value occurring the most frequently and the smaller data value and the larger data value occurring a smaller number of times and about the same number of times. And then here we have an example of a bimodal distribution where two of the data values are occurring the same amount of times, um, and that happens to be the most, so those are the modes. But we still see symmetry in the set, even though the, uh, the data value occurring the most isn't in the middle like it was in a binomial distribution. Here are some examples of non-symmetric distributions. We have one where the kind of tail of the data goes out to the left, so it's called skew to the left. The other, the little tail, goes out to the right. And here's another bimodal distribution, but it doesn't happen to be symmetric. It's not the same on both the left and right side. An important category of symmetric distributions are normal distributions. When you see a bell shape like these sketches here, um, when the data looks like it's distributed in this way, it's often normal distribution, a distribution that gives us a lot of power for what we know about the set. But Chebyshev's theorem actually talks about um, something we know about all sets, regardless of how they are distributed. That's the power of Chebyshev's theorem. It doesn't require a particular distribution. It says that the fraction of data values that lie within k standard deviations of their mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared, as long as k is something bigger than 1. So k could be 2, 3, 4, K could also be 1.1 or 1.01, anything bigger than 1. So as an example where you might be asked to use Chebyshev's theorem, what's the minimum percentage of the items in a data set which lie within three standard deviations of the mean? So before I work this problem out, I just want to call your attention to the word minimum. It's possible that we have more, but we want to know what's the very minimum percentage or fraction of the data item that would lie within three standard deviations of the mean. Why is the question phrased this way? Well, that has to do with Chebyshev's theorem. It says that at least this amount, so it's giving us a minimum amount of data that has this characteristic of being within a certain number of standard deviations of the mean. So to figure out what percentage lie within three standard deviations of the mean, we write down our formula, 1 minus 1 over k squared, and we identify that k, since it's the number of standard deviations, would be 3 in this question. So we're going to subtract 1 minus 1 over 3 squared. Now, 3 squared means 3 times 3, so that's 1 minus 1 over 9. Or, on your calculator, 3 to the second power equals 9. Subtracting fractions requires a common denominator. If you are not comfortable with that, you can actually use your TI-30X2S calculator and many other types, but this is the one that I have my students use. You can use this to subtract fractions. So I can type in 1 minus, and then I see this fraction key up here, A, B over C. We're going to type in the numerator, 1, fraction bar 9 equals, and our answer is 8 ninths. By hand, you would convert 1 to the form 9 over 9 and subtract 1 over 9, and we would have 8 ninths that way as well. Now, if you wanted to know what decimal that is, you would take 8 and divide it by 9, and that would give you 0.88888. So let's say that we wanted this answer to three decimal places, you would have to round off to 0.889. Or perhaps someone's asking you to give a percentage. That's about 88.9% of the data moving the decimal place two places to the right. So we have three possible ways you might be asked to give your answer to this question, a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. 
Remember, this is the minimum amount of the data. It's possible 100% of the data lies within three standard deviations of the mean, but we know for sure, regardless of the distribution of the data, that at least 88.9% of it does. Let's look at an application. It says in a certain distribution, the mean is 70 with a standard deviation of 5. At least what fraction of numbers are between the following pair of numbers? When you see at least what fraction or at least what percentage, and they haven't told you that you have a normal distribution, then we're probably using Chebyshev's theorem. Now, to understand what information they're giving us about the distribution, I sketched a little picture. Now, remember, I don't really know that the data look this shape, but I just randomly drew a shape for the data so I can visualize it. And they're telling us that 70 is the mean, which would be right in the middle, and that one standard deviation away from the mean is 5 units. So that would mean if 70 is in the middle, then going 5 out on either side, we would be between 65 and 75. This picture in yellow shows all the data within one standard deviation of the mean, but it doesn't cover 60 to 80. So let's, let's draw another picture here showing two standard deviations of the mean and see where we are. So um, once again, 70 is in the middle, and we go out by fives because we know five units is one standard deviation. And we see that if we go out five twice, we're to 60 on the left and 80 on the right. So this green portion represents all the data within two standard deviations of the mean. So what they're really asking us is at least what fraction of the numbers are within two standard deviations of the mean. And that is exactly the type of question we are, where we can answer with Chebyshev's theorem. We would plug in 1 minus 1 over k squared would be 1 minus 1 over 2. k is 2 in this case because it's two standard deviations of the mean to be between 60 and 80. And so we would say that's 1 minus 1 fourth or 3 fourths. Now that is a perfectly valid answer. And in fact, since they asked us what fraction of the numbers, this is actually a question from my math lab. So, and you can see here that they specified to type a simplified fraction. But in other cases, they might ask you to type a decimal, so 0.75 or a percentage, 75%. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. Giving it a thumbs up helps other students find the video. 